their sixth year head coach elected to defer. Clemson will receive. It rained and rained and rained here this morning. So it is humid, but it's a very comfortable 70 degrees. Tigers have won the last 31 games in this series that dates back to Clemson's first football game ever, Halloween Day of 1896. And the kick will not be returned by Shipley. And here comes the young man from Inland Empire, California, Roddy, DJ Ui Ungalale, who, and I thought you made an interesting point a moment ago and a, a very fair one. His leadership the other night I thought was readily evident, especially when it was 14-10 and Clemson had to get some things done. The big question that Brandon Streeter and Dabo Sweeney wanted answered is how would he respond when they went through a rough patch in that game against Georgia Tech? Well, they went through it early, and the response was admirable. Now, he got helped out by special teams, but they don't apologize for that. You want to continue to see that leadership today. Will Shipley the back with him off the right hip. Here's Clemson first and ten. Opening play of the ball game, and this is Brandon Spector, who missed all of last year, picking up about three to the right side. Hugh Ryan, the safety. Bryce McCormick, who's playing with Braden Gilby, is one of those linebackers for Coach Hendricks and the Paladins. There's a look at Hugh Ryan. A lot of South Carolinians on the Paladin roster, and, of course, several as well on the Clemson roster. We'll be talking a lot about Palmetto State High School football throughout the afternoon. <laughs> Here's Uwe Ungalale, quick throw, catch is made, and upfield again goes Spectre. You know, Wes, it's, it's passes like that that are the frustrating ones. I mean, this is an easy toss out to the receiver, and it's low so that Spectre has to go down, then recover before he's able to make a play. The Clemson's on short rest having played on Monday, but a fast start will go a long way towards helping them shake off some of that rust. Tigers hit almost 44% on third down the other night in the win against Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Third and a half dozen for Uwe Ungalale. From the pocket with time, looking downfield. Bo Collins spins and is tripped up shy of the 30-yard line by Travis Blackshear. Old high school buddies from SoCal connecting there. Ends up being essentially one-on-one -on -one with Bo Collins against Travis Blackshear with a lot of room to work with. And DJ Uwe Ungalale makes a nice throw, leading Collins away from Blackshear in a big first down pickup. Just outside the Furman 30. Clemson's fourth snap of the day. And Shipley running right behind McFadden and Marcus Tate on the left side of that offensive line. Now, Roddy, that's an area, too, that a lot of people were very interested in Monday night, especially with the rookie Blake Miller drawing the start at right tackle. Yeah, there was some good, some bad, but ultimately you're going to want to continue to see development there, too. Yep, here is Shipley. Kind of showing you the straight ahead attack and stop just shy of the 25 so third and about five for the Tigers on another McCormick tackle you mentioned that offensive line Wes I, I thought their inability to run the ball consistently against Georgia Tech was, was one of those things that they're want they're going to want to get corrected talked about Will Shipley in the open but DJ Uwe Ungalale was a big part of that run game too a year ago they averaged just under 168 yards a game only 119 Monday night in Atlanta Berman is a team that likes to play man coverage. Question is, how many safeties are they going to leave back to help? Looks like you're going to get some version of man, though. Louis Angelo looks left in the middle of the field. The ball is caught and got a, and he'll be tackled just short of the goal. They called it a touchdown or not? I never saw an official arm go up. They're going to mark him short of the touchdown. We got a corner Rolling blitz. The field is the runner short of the goal line. He's down at the one yard line where it will be first down. It's tough for us to see where the knee goes down, but you got a corner blitz that leaves the free safety Hugh Ryan in a really tough position against Joseph Ngata. I thought initially that he got in. Now we'll get a look at when his knee, yeah, that knee is down. But the question is, does he reach the ball out before that? Because the ball was well over the goal yep. line when he reached it out. So right. when, what the timing of that is going to be the big question. The replay official, Bob Sokolowski, next door with us. Jack McElwee, the communicator, and we're getting ready to have a look-see here. 
Ruling on the field is that the receiver is short of the goal line. That play is under review. And Gata hoping for his fifth career touchdown. Played nine games a year ago. The ball's not shot. out yet. Yeah, is the ball's not extended yet. It's a good call. I think it's going to be on the one yard line. Nice job by the officials on the field. I mean, yep. we're all over it. Charles LaMartina is our referee today of this Atlantic Coast Conference crew, and he's having a look here. But a nice start for Clemson, Roddy, to build a little bit on what they did Monday night on that short turnaround, you know. Yeah, and the, the thing that you want to see from Clemson, it's the, the offense is going to be simpler today. Let's hear the call. After further review, the ruling in the field has been confirmed. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. First down. The offense is going to be simpler with it ha with them having played on Monday. But you want to see them winning in man coverage. You want to see good throws being made when guys are open. And on that first drive, you've seen it so far. Yep. So Engato will be denied the touchdown. And it would have been the first TD pass, second TD pass of the year for Wee Ungulama. Allen and Brenningstone, the tight ends. It is Shipley left side, and that is the Tiger touchdown. Ultimately a good, efficient drive from Clemson. A couple of third down conversions on some good throws by DJ Uyunglele, some separation from the receivers. Will Shipley gets the layup. Yeah. The first touchdown. Seven plays, 75 yards and 314. Roddy Uyunglele, four for four, 69 yards. And BT Potter's point. Gives him a point in 44 straight ball games now for the Tigers. Early score for the nation's number five team. It's Will Shipley from a yard out. Clemson in front. 72 and one under Dabo Sweeney when they score first, and that's what they've done here this afternoon against Furman. And BT Potter set to kick it away. Wayne Anderson to the far side, and that 82 in the white jersey is Ryan Miller, who is listed as a tight end. And nothing could be further from the truth, right? <laughs> Here's a kick by Potter, that's halfway through the end zone. And that'll bring us to Tyler Huff, the Furman quarterback, a grad transfer from Presbyterian. A young man who graduated from the uh, Blue Hose program in three years, got married over the summer, and is Coach describes him and his offensive coordinator, Justin Roper, as a calm guy. I, I would, would uh, assume so with the age that, that Tyler Huff is. He's brought a lot of stability to that quarterback position. Jace Wilson had to start last year as a true freshman. But Tyler Huff had a nice game last week. On top of his passing numbers, 94 yards rushing from the Furman quarterback. 230-pound back, Dominic Roberto is with him in the backfield. And, boy, the Tigers were hunting on the first snap. Yeah, they were. Somebody forgot the snap count. It seemed like Evan Jumper, the center. Yeah. Offside. Defense number 98. Five-yard penalty. First down. Miles Murphy. Clemson was waving like it was a false start. Murphy is the one that goes down in the books. Murphy. Rook. A row, row, row is on that defensive line today. Tyler Davis not going to play today for the Tigers. There's a row, row, row. The helmet of Huff comes off, and down goes the Furman quarterback. The play is whistled dead when the helmet comes off, by the way. And his helmet went all the way back into the end zone. He's going to have to come out for a play, so you're going to see Chase Wilson. They forgot to block the defensive tackle, Ruka Rororo, with Trenton Simpson coming up the middle. And uh, Tyler Huff's lucky that his helmet was all that came off. He actually did a decent job avoiding the contact. Here is Jace Wilson, who bears an uncanny resemblance to former Georgia Tech quarterback Justin Thomas, by the way. 
And this is Roberto, the big 230-pound back. They had six touchdowns in their last five games a season ago, and Miles Murphy, the stop of Dominic Roberto from Fayetteville, North Carolina, who had 53 yards in their season opening win against North Greenville a week ago Thursday. This is going to be a tough position for any team to be in this season. You've got Miles Murphy on one side, KJ Henry on the other, Brian Brzee in the middle. And there's always the threat of Trenton Simpson coming from depth. There's third and eight. Flip it out in the flat, a shoulder pad catch, Roberto. First down, 40-45, and into Clemson territory. Goes the big back before Makuba gets him to the ground near the 46. Well, for years, Clemson has been a defense that waited until the last possible minute to get the call in and go. They're still wondering what the call is when Furman snaps the ball. You don't recognize the screen. A good job by Roberto of hauling it in, and Furman with a big first down. First and 10, here is Huff back in the ball game, flips it, and here is the tight end Miller we spoke of earlier, and big Ryan Miller down the far sideline. Roddy, this young man's a fascinating story. Fifth year senior from Jackson, Tennessee, 28 yards on his first catch. He's listed as a tight end, as you said earlier. He's a slot receiver that they just put in the H-back position at times. But this is a guy that's going to have a chance to play at the next level. He's got the speed. He's got the hands. He's a playmaker, two-time All-American yep. at the FCS level. 84th career catch for Miller. And the Paladins on the march now in the Clemson red zone on their opening possession. They were five for five there against North Greenville. Roberto on the right side. And finally brought to the ground by Simpson, just inside the 15. There is Wes Goodwin, Roddy, who uh, I thoroughly enjoyed our chat with the young man in his first season as the defensive coordinator. Spent four years here as the defensive analyst. He's got a terrific football journey to get to this spot. And graduated with almost a small high school class as our, uh, our own Taylor Davis. Yep. 28 Just, people in his graduating class yeah. down there in Southwest Alabama. Don't worry, Tita, you still got the mark. Here is Huff. Again, Miller. Boy, took a big lick right at the 15 from Fred Davis. I think the poise shown by Tyler Huff so far has been admirable. He's going to be under pressure all day long, but can he find guys underneath? And then occasionally, when you get enough, when you get enough protection, can you take a shot down the field? Here's where Clemson, I expect them to heat it up. You're going to play man coverage on the back end and likely send pressure. Question for Furman is, what's your answer? Earlier in the drive, it was a screen. Do you go back to that? Maybe a quarterback draw, try and get the legs of Tyler Huff involved. They took Gissinger, the blocking tight end, out. They put three to the right. Here's the throw and catch to Shiflett, and that goes nowhere. He got hit. Simpson was in the fray for the Tigers. And Luke Shiflett, another fifth-year senior for Clay Hendricks, can't do anything with it. And a field goal try now coming. And Axel LaPro, a redshirt sophomore who hit an 18-yarder last week against North Greenville, will try one here. Right at 30 yards. Kick is good. So Furman on the board with just under eight minutes to go in this first period of play. Clay Hendricks' team trails 7 3 from Tiger Town. Then football. Defensive tackle Brian Brzee's 15 year old sister Ella is battling brain cancer. The team named her honorary team captain before today's game, and Brian led the team through Tiger Walk today, all sporting these Ella Strong t shirts. Those same words can be found tattooed and taped on Brian's arm. Words that he says are a constant reminder to keep going, something he learned from his sister. And of course, the entire Clemson community and all of us are sending our thoughts and prayers to Ella and the Brzee family. Guys. Yeah, Taylor, wonderful. And thank you for sharing. And Roddy, uh, this is impacting Clemson in a way and Dabo Sweeney shared with us yesterday in a way that, you know, they're trying to rally around their guy, Brian Brzee, as much as they are his family. Yeah, it, this is where Clemson is at its best, Les. It, it is a family around here. And you can feel it when you're on campus and the way that they have put their arms around the Brzee family, around Brian and around Ella. 
it, it's just it's really cool to see because this is what college football can be at its absolute best. Yep. And you see Nick Eason, who's in his first year, former Tiger great, coming in from the NFL now and coaching defensive line. We will be playing for a lot of things this year, but this one will be at the front of our hearts. I've met a lot of tough people in my life, but Ella Brzee is the real deal. What a moment there. Phil Maffa has come in. And Uwe Ungalale will hand to the big back. And a yard or two from Maffa. Roddy, this brings us back to this offense, and there's Brian on the bench. And as Taylor said, we're all with you, big fella. Um, this is the question about this run game, and you hit it on the top. It's Moffin, it's Pace, it's Shipley. Now, he's RB1. Shipley's the guy. But this guy right here can change things a little bit. Yeah, he certainly can. He's physically talented, got all the reps in the spring. The question is, will the offensive line open up enough room to help? DJ spins it here to the near side, and EJ Williams the catch. First down to the 40-yard line before the Paladins make the play with Jalen Miller, the linebacker. Young man from Burns High School in Duncan, South Carolina, in the Paladin linebacking group. 13-yard throw from Uwe Ungolale, off to a good start. That's Brenning Stool, the tight end in motion. And we get delay a game here. Procedure on the Tigers. Full start, offense number six. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's on E.J. Williams, the wide receiver. Had a lot of Furman defenders creeping up from linebacker and even safety level, but it's E.J. Williams on the edge who ends up, ends up uh, not being able to hold his water. So first and 15 after the penalty on Clemson. Looks left, throws left. Another catch for Williams. Up the field and pushed out of bounds near the 46-yard line by Dominic Morris. All freshman pick a year ago when he started two of nine games and had an interception for the Paladins. But back-to-back -back catches for Williams. And that throw is such an integral part of keeping this offense on schedule. I mean, how many times did we see Trevor Lawrence just raise up and sling it out to Justin Ross for an eight-yard gain on first down? Hmm. True. Second and four, and Maffa will get the first down, breaking the midfield line to the Furman 49-yard line. Now, the one thing you don't have to question about Uwe Ungalale is the arm talent. No, absolutely not. And, and he doesn't have to make the wow plays every single time. If he can complete the throw that we just saw to E.J. Williams, if he can do that 99% of the time, easy access throw, just an out to the field, that makes this Clemson offense significantly better just by making that throw. Here's Maffa reaching again. Picks up four for sure on first down. Talked a little bit about Phil Maffa. He's a guy that they flirted with returning kicks as well. And they're really excited about this entire running back room, but Dabo Sweeney kind of lit up when he talked about Phil Maffa yesterday. Yeah, sure did. There's Uwe Ungolale in trouble now, moving away from the pressure, and the big fellow runs with it. First down and more, and diving toward the 30-yard line. And I think that's what you talked about at the top as being a difference maker from a year ago. The whole thing, Wes, he was physical in the run game a week ago, which you love to see, but he looked light on his feet just then. And my favorite thing about this run, not only are the missed tackles or the broken tackles, but the getting up with the passion and signaling the first down, love to see that fire. Here's a throw over Williams' head, incomplete. First incompletion of the afternoon for Uwe Ungalale. You got to back it up hitting a layup, though. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a layup there on the sideline. I get you fired up, but settle down, hit your receiver on the sideline, keep the keep the, the rhythm going of this offense. That's the frustrating thing, but the leadership, the passion that we saw a week ago and that we've seen earlier in this game. We Here's another third and medium situation for the Tigers. So Furman has tried to bring pressure on a couple of third downs here. Some substitutions coming. If I'm Furman, you might try dropping eight. 
See if you can clog up windows for DJ Uyunglele, because with man coverage, the receivers have been winning, and DJ's been putting it on the money. Make DJ go through his progressions and find the open receiver in man, excuse me, in zone. That's Antonio Williams wearing zero for Clemson. He's in the slot right. Uyunglele across the middle. Williams on cue. First and goal. Nope, going to be ruled incomplete. They're going to call. No, they're going to call him down at the eight before the ball popped out. Jack Rhodes, the nice hit for Furman here on Antonio Williams. Antonio Williams was a big bright spot a week ago. I think that's the right call, calling him down. Yep, and he hit at the eight, and we're going to have a review. Previous play of a catch is under further review. Okay. So our second review of the opening period with Clemson leading by four at seven to three. Roddy, you mentioned Williams. I guess the most fascinating part, and we'll get another look here. So the big thing you're looking for is does he control it? Does he maintain control? The ball obviously comes out. That's a, that's a, <laughs> this was a tough one because he catches it and he gets a couple of feet down, right? Secures it and then goes down. I wouldn't consider this one of those going to the ground where he's catching it as he's going to the ground. He catches it, gets a couple of feet down. There's a time element to this as well. Because it's called a catch on the field, I would say at the bare minimum, this stands. You're putting your record on the line here. Absolutely. You have to, man. I got to take a stand here, and I'm going to stand on the side of stands. After further review, the ruling the field has been confirmed. Oh, confirmed. First down Clemson. That counts. That counts. I was on the right side of history there. You remain undefeated in week two. <laughs> That, two reviews, three reviews, three yeah. reviews. Two we didn't three, have one maybe. last week. You oh, had so one. We're two for two. You had one in week zero, as I recall. Yeah, got that one. Yeah. yeah. Not that we keep score on these things. No, but, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, so Furman did go zone. Right. DJ found Antonio Williams, who was a big bright spot for him last week. It was a nice job by the Clemson quarterback. Tenth play of the drive is first and goal at the eight. Papa staying in the ball game. Big back gets a carry. Look at the collision at the two. Took three white shirts. Braden Gilby, the linebacker, was the lead guy in the fray for Clay Hendricks Paladins. It's a pretty good job by Furman of rallying after the initial collision. It's going to take a village to bring down Phil Moffat today, and a village showed up. Came into the ball game, 76 career carries, 320 yards and three scores. It just feels like he's had more of an impact. We saw him two springs ago, and he was dynamic in the spring game then. Second and goal. Louis Engelale waits. Brenning stool touchdown. say two possessions and a pretty good day so far for DJU. You're not winning a lot of praise by doing things against a team like Furman, but when it looks the way it's supposed to look, it gives you comfort in where this team is. Point after from BT Potter is good. Timeout on the field. Tigers have had it twice. They have two touchdowns. And lead Furman 11 on the TD catch by Jake Brenningstool. Former Tiger quarterback and first year offensive coordinator, but another guy who's 10th year on the staff. Here at Clemson, this change in the offseason on both the offensive and defensive side is off to a good start. Well, this is game two of our ACC Network triple header. Don't forget, we got more football for you tonight. Two games now. Western Carolina GC5 lines up on his alma mater tonight. Yeah, Seven o'clock at Bobby Dodd with John Schriff and Rini and Golia. You can see that on ACC and X. And then meanwhile, Tim Hasselback, Dave O'Brien, Kelsey Riggs, ACC primetime football. BC Virginia Tech tonight at eight. Worsham Field at Lane Stadium, Roddy, on ACC Network. That feels like a big game, Wes. Ooh. And let me tell you, it's two offenses that are in a rough spot right now.
Here's a reverse, and this is the wide receiver, Wayne Anderson, picking up about five before Trenton Simpson chases him down. Going back to that Virginia Tech-Boston College game tonight, uh, Boston College's offense was, was pretty good if they got the ball to Zay Flowers, but if Phil Dracovic couldn't, I mean, they gave up so much pressure a week ago. And Virginia Tech's defense was really good at creating it. The question for Virginia Tech offensively is can you find somebody other than Keyshawn King and not turn the ball over? Tyler Huff trying to get it on the perimeter, and that's intended for Miller. He makes the catch, falling down at the 32. The hit of Jalen Phillips. Well, and here's the other thing. The loss of Christian Mahogany in the offensive line, we thought it was big. And last week, what, Roddy, 28 carries, 29 yards in the run game? Yeah, not to mention for BC. Yeah, and, and the constant duress for Jacoby. Now, that BC defense played well, which makes me think that uh, points are going to be at a premium tonight. Yep. And what do we get here? Procedure on Furman. Too many guys moving at once, maybe. Ball start. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Anderson Tomlin. Big fellow from Mountain Brook in Birmingham making his 18th start in a preseason All Southern Conference. They got two preseason All Conference players in this line. Tomlin at the left tackle. Pearson Toomey is the right tackle. Also preseason All Southern Conference. Furman's in the top half, top third, if you will, of the of the Southern Conference in the preseason. Clay Hendricks team looks like they might be. Now they get East Tennessee State next Saturday. Chattanooga. One of the preseason favorites as well in the SoCon. Here is Huff ripping it. And Anderson the catch. Is that going to be enough for the first down at the 36? Is the question on the grab by Wayne Anderson. It's a good route by Wayne Anderson. Running it past the stick so when he comes back down the stem to catch that football. Watch him push past that 35-yard line so that when he has to come back, he's able to get the first down. It's good execution by the former running back. See, running backs can run routes, too. Well, he was moved to wide receiver in the spring. Oh, yeah. No, still. <laughs> we still claim him. The running back room still claims him. After better than 300 yards rushing a year ago. This is Devin Abrams around the edge. Nine yards on first down for Abrams. Fifth-year senior for the Paladins from Pensacola, who had 49 yards on six carries in the win against North Greenville. That likely will be... If Furman wants it to be the final play of the first period. This Furman team has come out with a good plan. Now we welcome you back. Second quarter getting ready to go. ACC Network football presented by Dr. Pepper. Clemson leading 14 to 3. And here's the Paladins on the march and trying to get something going here. And where Miller's going to have a hard time picking up the first down because there were three orange shirts in the backfield. Simpson and Phillips. The headliners. Get the, ball, get the ball to your best player, right? Yeah, and that was that was a, a smart thing to do. But but for Clemson, that play was made by, made by Fred Davis, number two in orange, was excellent setting the edge. And I thought these Clemson corners last week against Georgia Tech did the same thing. They played physical. A lot of that's because of the competition. Fred Davis, Sheridan Jones, and Nate Wiggins. That's three guys fighting for two spots. You yep. better be physical out there on the perimeter. Yep. In motion, they're going to hand the ball to Anderson. He's trying to get to the corner, won't get there. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. And just like the old man, when he gets to you, he's got the hammer with him. Some guys are finesse tacklers, and some guys are punishers. And Jeremiah Trotter is an absolute punisher. He's not going to get as much publicity this year because of the two guys standing next to him. Trenton Simpson, Barrett Carter, the guys up front, and then the guys behind as well. But he is one heck of a player there in the middle of that defense. Six plays, and here is the punt. This is Ryan Levy toward Will Taylor, who's going to let it hit, and it checks back toward the Furman end of the field and down right around the 31-yard line. Wes, DJ Uyunglele so far in this game has been pretty sharp, and I think that with him coming out and the performance that he's had so far, it's really encouraging for Clemson fans for a couple of reasons. One, he's well protected, and there's nobody around him, but this was on a third down play down the field to Bo Collins. This, another third down with the blitz coming off the edge from the corner, identifies one-on-one -on -one with the safety and finds Joe Ngata, and then Jake Grinning stole an easy pitch and catch out there in the flat. DJ, Ung DJ Uyunglele, Look pretty sharp early in this one. Shipley's back in the ball game and on 
first down gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. Evan DiMaggio, the tackle for Furman Taylor. Yeah, guys, I thought it was interesting when we spoke with uh, Dabo Sweeney this week, and he said last year DJ's focus was leading the offense. This year, it's about leading the team. And I asked Will Shipley about it, and he echoed that. He said, when five talks, people listen. And he also said he hasn't always been a talker. But, Roddy, you even noticed that on the field last week. Yeah, I did. He was uh, chirping with some of those Georgia Tech guys after some plays. Back foot throw, Collins a catch. And that shows you his physical size because Jalen Miller was right around him. And so was Jeremiah Jackson, and he's still got enough athleticism and power, Roddy, to deliver a catchable ball. I'm not sure that I would advise living like that on a regular basis, but every once in a while you want to throw it in there. It's impressive to see Georgia Tech had a hard time getting him down in the pocket as well last week. That strength certainly on display. Here's Louis Ungolale again with time, throws, and Davis Allen a first down grab in the Furman secondary against the safety Hugh Ryan. 23 yard throw and another Tiger first down. When he air bails it, you got to talk about it, but when he makes a great throw, you got to talk about it as well. Look at the ball placement here. Davis Allen has a guy on his back, so he throws it high and outside where only the tight end can catch it. It's a heck of a throw by five. Tigers. Right to the line of scrimmage. He fits it in a tight window that time. And the grab made by Brandon Spector. It'll be a pickup of right at five on first down. Roddy, we got into a little quarterback talk yesterday with Davo Sweeney and with Brandon Streeter about climbing the pocket, right? Uwe Ungalale, two guys around him. He gets the throw away to Collins. If he steps up in the pocket, is that what they're talking about? You got to go ahead and climb the pocket there? Yeah, you, you have to trust it. The, the instances that they pointed out last week, he drifted when he had a solid pocket up the middle. And that's really where you want to live, climbing up towards the line of scrimmage. Shipley on second down, will leave it a, a yard shy of the first. 11 of 12, 148 in the score so far for the big Cinco from Inland Empire. And by the way, the times we've been around him, a very likable young man. Very likable. Yep. And has is fairly, or, or I think fairly, but sometimes unfairly, come under criticism mm -hmm. over the course of his career. I mentioned in the open, there is a standard at quarterback at this institution that is as high as any standard in the country. And today, he looks like he's living up to it. Yep. Will Shipley, look at Furman rallying the ball. I don't think Will Shipley got there. In fact, Jack Barton and Jalen Clark were right there. Bryce Stanfield, another impactful freshman a season ago, also helping out, I think. With the linebacker running through Walker Parks, excuse me, Will Putnam is a little bit late coming off the double team. He's going to set up a fourth down, Clemson going for it. Yep. Tigers one for one on fourth down, nine of 16 a year ago. Rui Ungole going to spin around the corner. He's got the first down, little side shuffle and falls to the 28. You know, you, you don't often see a guy's confidence grow live and in front of you. But we didn't see runs like this last year. We didn't see plays like this. We didn't see the improvisation. We didn't see the stop and start. He's playing like a guy early in the season. Let's say second half of last last week, or I guess earlier this week on Monday, and through this game, he's playing like a guy that has confidence and isn't afraid to trust himself on the field. First and 10, ball at the 28, wanted to throw the lob, now Will for Ngata, and that'll be the second miss of the day in the throw game for Rui Ungole, and there is a marker at the 10. And and it'll hold. Be, yep. Late flag coming from the far corner against Micah Robinson. Pass interference, defense number 14. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. There is Clay Hendricks saying the Robinson pass interference, and that goes back to Rob Roddy playing clean yeah. for Furman today. Yeah, you can't have the penalties. It was a little bit of hand fighting early on, a grab around the waist as that pass was was released that continued into the shot that we saw. DJ now will tuck it and run. Try to get to the perimeter. A stiff arm on a man, and then a flag is thrown in as 
Uwe Ungolay steps out around the seven. Now as the flag back behind the play. Maybe on the freshman Miller. We'll see. Furman thinks it is. Maybe uh, on DJ Uwe abusing a defensive back. <laughs> We'll Looks to, like a Josh Allen stiff arm. We'll have to check the book if that's the call. Hey. Holding offense number 10. 10 yard penalty from the spot and foul. Repeat, first down. And got him. Joseph was like, they don't give me a touchdown. Now they call for the holding. <laughs> they got something against me, coach. Coach. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would say uh, okay. that was just as much of a hold as Michael Robinson had to play before. Fair. Yep. <laughs> well done. A little counter here. Shipley trying to scoot through. What a move. Touchdown. Sixth time in Will Shipley's young career, he's had a multi-rush touchdown game. And he just tied Wayne Gallman on the list. And now he only trails Travis Etienne and Deshaun Watson in Tiger history. Especially in your second year on the, uh, in Death Valley. Point after good. Clemson is three for three on touchdowns today. Will Shipley with great patience, setting up the blocks, and then explodes in the end zone to put the Tigers up big. Will Shipley has got the sixth career multi-rush touchdown game. He's got two of Clemson's first three scores here today. You see the Tigers scoring summary and drive chart. I should note that the ETN 19, the Watson 7, and now Gallman and Shipley tied at 6 have all been Roddy since 2013. Yeah, I would assume C.J. Spiller got to be on some, some list of that somewhere. Well, you and C.J. Spiller can't get away from one another, but here's the replay. Well, it's a great job. It's a little guard H-back counter with an X crack. You get Bo Collins coming in, cracking on the linebacker. The biggest thing that you saw there was a hat on a hat. You get a great job by Davis Allen coming around, locking on. Great job on the front side. And then Bo Collins. You know, it doesn't have to be a crucial block, and honestly, it can't be nowadays, but he shields the defender. Will Shipley goes to the house. Kick through the end zone. So now Tyler Huff out of Orange Park, Florida, has got some work to do for these Paladins. Little shovel pass, and Miller got chopped down, and firing through was Keith McGuire. Keith McGuire had that run from the very second that play was snapped. He was right there in the hole where Ryan Miller was taking the shovel pass. We got some of these younger guys, and then that Clemson def defensive front, we're getting a look at Peyton Page. 315-pound defensive tackle, and that's Roberto to about the 20 or to about the 31-yard uh, line for a run of about six. There's Dominic Roberto, who's got pro size too, Rod. All, all these Furman backs have pro size. The Mayan Hicks, 216 pounds. Dominic Roberto, 231, and runs hard too. And then you got Devin Abrams. Yep. We saw out there first at 215. Got a good room there. Third down now. Furman two for four. We got movement by the Paladins. Ball start. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's the grad transfer, Parks Gissinger from Michigan State. The penalty there. For those wondering, our uh, referee, Charles Lamartina, did eventually get the three fingers up to match the third down. <laughs> third almost the full 10. Huff got away from Maskell, now going to turn it upfield and take a big lick right in front of the down to make, or the line to make, and Tyler Venables 
made him pay the price for the first down. Yeah, Tyler Venables has to be a little careful there. Drops his head at the very end. Ooh. Quarterback, while he is a runner, he is a runner there, so he's not a defenseless player. And I don't think Tyler Venables got his head down enough to for it to be crown of the helmet. But that one was close. It was headed that way. Nice play by Huff to keep the drive alive for the Paladins. And on the slant, Joshua Harris his first catch, second of the year for Harris, who a year ago had 23 catches, 250 yards, and a touchdown in an All Freshman performance. The poise of Tyler Huff has been impressive today. You've got Brian Brzee breathing down your neck. As he's trying to take a cut. Swings it out there. Hasn't had an incompletion yet today. 10 for 10 for 70 yards. Here's Huff trying to buy some time again. Wants to run. He'll get to the midfield line and another first down. Trenton Simpson tripped him up, but Tyler Huff's keeping the game alive for Furman. Clay Hendricks told us last week, uh, I think Tyler Huff's going to slide a little bit more this week. It's going to be a little bit different. He had a chance opted not to do it. He's been taking some hits. Yeah, guys, the coaches told us one thing they learned last week about Tyler Huff is probably that he's more athletic than they even thought. He made North Greenville's best guy miss. Even against this Clemson defensive front, he's continuing to show that he doesn't panic. He's got that composure. It's something that they'll need moving forward. Tell you what, he's 18 yards richer, too, in the throw game. 11 for 11 now. And this is in the hole in cover, two. Wayne Anderson in between the safety and the corner, and he slings it in there. Furman has moved the ball in this Clemson defense. Yep. Roberto's come back in to join Huff in the backfield. In motion, that's Gissinger, who's more of a blocker. And they're going to hand the ball to Roberto. And shoot top tackle by McGuire. Off the bottom of that stack. Clemson's rotating guys playing without Tyler Davis today. Brzee's come back in. He's playing up front, KJ Henry. In that front, along with Murphy and Rook Aroraro, which is easily top five best name in college football. Roddy. Yeah, you, you said I was going to agree with you. I mean, I, I got to go through the list of names. Here's a throw and a fumble by Miller, and it is scooped up, and that's Fred Davis. Is it going to be called a turnover or an incomplete pass? Banged out of there by Malcolm Green, and it is a turnover. This will be an interesting one because there's always a time element involved in the catch. You have to secure it, make a move common to the game. I don't know that he's ever got it secured, Wes. After that, when he brings it into his chest, kind of pins it. But this will certainly be reviewed. We'll step aside and update you. One game. Israel Abanakanda. He may. He might. He abandoned can, duh, 76 yards to the crib. Pitt leads this one 10-7 in the first half. Wes, Roddy, back to my guys. Brandon Streeter, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, told us he wanted Kate Klubnick to get a drive in the first half. He wanted it when those Furman starters were still in the game, but that wasn't going to happen unless the game was under, under control. See the stats, number one quarterback in the country coming in, and everybody's favorite, the backup quarterback. Yep. Klubnick, first down give Pace. Here's Kobe on second. First down and more to the 24 goes Kobe Pace before Achina, Ama Achina, the redshirt freshman at linebacker, makes a play for Furman. Now, here's the deal with Klubnik. He's also playing with the number one O-line here and number one guys around him, Roddy. Yeah, it gives you a really good evaluation of where he is. He had a really impressive drive a week ago. Felt like he injected some energy into that offense. First and 10. Klubnik to his right and offline. Intended out on the perimeter for Antonio Williams. 
And as, as good as he looked a week ago, Georgia Tech was well out of the game. And I'm not, not degrading at all what he did. But you do want to see him in one of these situations where the defense is still fairly fresh, where the offensive line is still in. Game plan is basically still intact on both sides. Here's Klubnik. Looking downfield, and God is out there, but he runs out of real estate. Flushed into the bench area by Emmanuel Adebayo. Thought he had a little bit more time in the pocket than maybe he initially anticipated. But you saw color coming through, and they're starting to peak, so I don't blame him for bailing on that one. But it creates a third and long situation. Clemson's been in this situation a number of times. Man-to-man a, -man a lot on these third downs. Tigers are four for five on third down today. Rolling to his right, looking down the field. Got to cut it loose, and he runs out of bounds. And got knocked out of bounds near the 21. Xavier Stevens was the guy chasing him. And you see Walker Parks go get his quarterback out of the visiting bench. The big right guard. There's really nowhere to go with that ball, especially when he started rolling. And that's the thing with a young quarterback. It was another one where probably had a little more time in and around the pocket than he initially anticipated. And Furman did a good job of pursuing once he got out of the pocket. So Callie Chiswick, the son of the former Auburn head coach, now Carolina defensive coordinator Gene Chiswick, who had a pick six in their opener a week ago Thursday here on the punt return off the... Aiden Swanson kick and Furman going to start right around its 46. So the fumble recovery by Davis, nothing for the Tigers. Finals already in in the ACC. CC's off to a pretty good week. Here's Huff and in and out of the hands of the tight end Miller. First miss of the day for Tyler Huff. First bad throw. It's just behind Miller. He had Miller open. We kind of alluded to it earlier. Listed as a tight end is Ryan Miller. He's going to play a receiver at the next level. And he's got enough craftiness to him. Probably a little more speed than people anticipate. They drew the comparisons to Cooper Cup. Now, that's lofty comparisons, and they said so themselves. But smaller school guy that they think can catch on. Here's the give to Abrams, and he will break through. That's one of the best runs of the day for Furman from scrimmage. Right at 14 yards for Devin Abrams. Be one of the best non-Tyler Huff runs. Right up the middle, Brzee goes up the field. They trap him, take 11 out of the game, out of the play. And procedure coming next on the Paladins. Well, Furman's under the direction. They've got a first-year offensive coordinator. Here's Full start, offense number 67. Five-yard penalty, first down. Fourth penalty of the day on Furman for 30 yards. Justin Roper is the offensive coordinator. Clay Hendricks came over from Bob Chesney's Holy Cross program, and Roper grew up in Metro Atlanta. His dad played football at Georgia Tech. And uh, he played both collegiately at Oregon and then at Montana for Bobby Houck toward the end of his career. Here's Abrams, nice middle screen, and Devin Abrams sets sail for another firm and first down. Down to around the 25-yard line before finally Keith McGuire makes the tackle. At Justin Roper getting the signals to his team's got to feel pretty good about where Tyler Huff and the offense are going here. Absolutely. He's got to feel good about the execution of his grad transfer quarterback. And Wes Goodwin's kind of looking for some answers here. Like I said, between the 30s, Furman's really moved the ball pretty well. Yep. Here is Huff to his right. Wanted to throw. Will throw. And just beyond the reach of 6-1 Kendall Dean. James Madison transfer couldn't reel in an errant throw from Tyler Huff. Wanted the quick game, but it just wasn't there. The offensive line was cutting the defensive line. Three offensive linemen going for those knees. And so there was no protection, and Tyler Huff had to get out of the pocket. It was a wise decision to throw it away. Of course, it probably didn't help his cause that five in the orange jersey was tracking him. Yeah, that, that never that never helps. <laughs> Kedja Henry had a nice game last week. He was probably the story of the Barrett Carter on that defense. Yep. There's a quick throw, middle of the field. This is Miller at the 10, the five. Touchdown Furman for Ryan Miller. <laughs> and 
And the Paladin faithful. See Huff and Miller connect for the score. Oh, Ryan Miller and the career that he's had at Furman. Again, two team, two time All American at the FCS level, and he's able to get in the end zone. And LaPro's point after hits the left upright and bounces away. Bless the proper description there is doink. But before that was Ryan Miller, a little slant, able to split the safeties. 25-yard touchdown catch from Ryan Miller off the throw from Tyler Huff, and it's a 12-point lead for Clemson under two to go, and there'll be no return by Will Shipley. All three timeouts waiting for Dabo Sweeney here, Roddy, but another look at the score. Yeah, Trenton Simpson's going to come off the edge. Ryan Miller pushes up. There's way too much cushion between he and Tyler Venables. Once he gets the inside, able to catch that ball, he splits he and Makuba and gets into the end zone with Simpson coming. Venables has to be over the receiver so that he can play that a little bit more squarely and not have that much cushion. And it looks like DJ Uyunglele is going to come back into the game and take this two-minute drive for Clemson. Yep. Three timeouts for the Tigers, leading by 12. First throw right here for Ngata, a stiff arm, gets him to the 35 and out of bounds for a first down against Micah Robinson. This is one of those great situations for your program, for your starting quarterback to have. A two-minute drive, got all your timeouts. He's 12 of 13 now in this first half for 158 after the throw there. Sling it on the floor, and Pace can't hang on, incomplete. There were footsteps in the neighborhood, too. It's a pretty good arm angle by DJ Uyunglele. Little drop down? Yeah, and we had to go sard arm. And sometimes when he has to reset his feet in the pocket, that's where the fundamentals sort of start to break down. But he's got the arm skill to do stuff like he did just then, whip it around the defender. So a two-by-two two look here on second and ten. Keep it. Long strider. And he'll pick up eight. Clemson going to let the clock run, and the Tigers going to get to the line here. Got plenty of time. Yep, 130. Save those timeouts for the other side. You can see the offense. Because you have those three timeouts, it allows you on a third down like this to take your time getting to the best play. Yep. 76 seconds to go. Quick throw on the perimeter. Here is Spectre. Made the first and second guy miss and then gets out of bounds at the 49. Jalen Miller shoved him out of bounds. That's nicely done by Brandon Spectre. It's also nicely done by Bo Collins. These blocks by receivers don't have to be punishing. You just need a stalemate. That's what Bo Collins gets, barely, but he does get a stalemate. And Brandon Spectre able to make plays. He's a good player. He's very crafty. Yep. I like the way he operates in the slot there. Redshirt junior from Calhoun who missed all of last year. Another two by two look for Clemson. Louis Ungalale going to take the deep shot looking downfield for Collins. There were two white shirts there. Micah Robinson was in the neighborhood and so was Hugh Ryan the free safety. You got a first down pass midfield in a two minute situation. I don't hate DJ Uyunglele taking the shot down the field. But if anything you want to lead your receiver further to the side. Hmm. Keep it in the field to play let him run under it rather than throwing it deep and him not being able to get to it. The worst thing you can have is an overthrow. Second and ten. That's Allen in motion. Going to hand the ball to Pace. Spins from one. First down, Kobe Pace. 54 seconds to go. 11-yard run. Jack Barton the tackle. And there is a Clemson timeout, Roddy. Clemson takes their first charge timeout of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. 
Check out the balance by Kobe Pace on that run. I mean, Jalen Miller just bounces off of the glutes of, of Kobe Pace as he's spinning around. It was a pretty impressive run. Hey, don't forget, uh, we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC through the first couple of weeks, and now we need your help. This fall, ACC Network wants to experience each sport, your perspective. So snap a picture, take a video, tag it with the hashtag, all the devotion, and post it to your social. You might see it on ACCN. You done that yet? Have not, but we see we you on ACC. We, we see could you do on it ACC. here. Yeah, we could. We should. Yeah, seen a lot of people. Yeah, we have. Great crowds, even with the hard rains this morning here in the upstate. It's never a doubt in this place that you were going to get a good crowd. Never a doubt. No, no. You're right about that. Out of the timeout, Clemson two left and a first down at the 38. Antonio Williams to the slot on the left. Louis Unglele to his right. Back across the body. Caught! Antonio Williams, 15-yard line and a leaping catch by the rookie from Irmo. Williams just works to find space. His quarterback's in trouble, just slowly drifts. And again, with DJ Uyunglele, I wouldn't live that way a lot, but he gets away with it, throwing late back over the middle. Quick throw inside, caught EJ Williams to the goal line. 30 seconds left to go. Clock stops there, and Clemson's going to take a timeout. Travis Blackshear saves the touchdown. Clemson takes their second charge time out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Roddy, I'll be honest with you. I think five's answering a lot of questions in this first half. I think I think he is is having the type of performance that calms some of the heat that's going on around that position. I agree. Now. The question coming in about accuracy, about uh, his ability when the pocket breaks down a little bit, those are still going to be there until you have the body of work to, to prove it. But this is what you want to see. And when it looks like what it's supposed to look like, it gives people a little bit of a chill pill when the, you got the five-star freshman who's the number one quarterback in the country behind you. Well, and here's the thing. Four performances a year ago of more than 200 yards, and people were up in arms. Well, he's two for two in 200-yard performances so far this year, and it's first half ball here today. The, the fact that we're comparing 200-yard performances kind of shows you where he's been. Right. That position needs to be up in the high twos, getting into the 300-yard performances on a regular basis. So here's first and goal with a half minute to go. Clemson still has one timeout. Kobe Pace trying to dig for the end zone and has it for the Tiger touchdown. <laughs> West, every single drive that DJ Uyunglele has been in there, this offense, while it hasn't been overly explosive, has been meticulous in its drives down the field. It's been efficient, I should say, in its drives down the field. You're not going to get awards for your performance against an FCS opponent, but when it looks the way it's supposed to look, it can leave you feeling very, very good. And this Clemson offense has looked the way it's supposed to look against Furman. Nine plays, 75 yards in less than 90 seconds. Kobe paces one yard run, his first touchdown of the year. And Potter punches through the extra point. Uwe Ungalale, four for six and 55 yards on the drive, too, Roddy. Which is kind of what we expect today. I mean, he's been on it. Back to the touchdown, Kobe Pace showing some patience, some power. I was going to say Kobe Pace showing some pace, but that was low hanging fruit. But I think you've seen a lot of the makings of a really good offense here. When DJ Sharp and they can have those easy throws when he can create with his legs, really helps. Because remember, when Clemson's been at its best in the past decade plus, Taj Boyd was a very good runner. Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence, I would upgrade that to very, very good runners. Yep. If DJ can add that to his game consistently, I think it's going to be going to go a long way to him keeping that job. And 
B.T. Potter from Rock Hill will kick it away, and there'll be no return for Wayne Anderson. So Clay Hendricks with 26 seconds left can ask Tyler Huff to and three timeouts, by the way, to just take a knee and go to the locker room. They get the ball to start the second half, or Furman's got nine points in the ball game. They've only scored more than seven, 16 times in the 57 games between the two schools prior to today. And one of those times was the last time they beat Clemson, late November 1936, when they scored 12. I'd like to see them try and get some points on the board. I mean, you're at Clemson, you're down 28 to nine. The worst thing that could happen is an interception that le or a turnover that leads to a touchdown, but I mean, you got nothing to lose here by going for it. And here is Huff, gonna hand to Avery on the left side. Whoa, what a collision at the 30. And I don't see a timeout. However, Makuba is down after the collision, and the clock is gonna be stopped with 14 seconds left. There is a position on this Clemson team where they are a little thin. It's safety. Mm. You had the retirement of Landon Zanders, Jalen Phillips, and Tyler Venables have played. But behind them, R.J. Mickens, Carson Donnelly, Sherrod Koval. It's just not a lot of experience back there. Oh, Makuba's OK. That was one heck of a hit. Well, Devin Abrams. Delivered. Yep. Kuba favoring that left side, that shoulder coming off the field. You hope that he's okay, because again, it's not, if there's a position on this defense where they're a little thin, it is that safety spot. Yep. So with 14 seconds left, Mickens will check in. There's Wes Goodwin. RJ Mickens had two picks a year ago out of South Lake Carroll in Texas. He is a junior, so Akuba, the sophomore who went to LBJ in Austin. So one Texan replaces another in the secondary. And here goes Abrams again, and Brzee's having none of that. And that will get him to the locker room, I believe. Yep, that'll do it. Tigers are going to take a... 19 point lead to the locker room. Four touchdowns in five possessions for Davo Sweeney's team. It's been a low possession down, but the offense, again, that one driver they had to punt, that was when Cade Klubnick came in and they kind of uh, kind of hit a little bit of a skid. Well, the Paladins will get the ball to start the second half. Anderson and Miller deep for BT Potter's kick. There'll be no return. And let's go downstairs. Taylor visited with Clay Hendricks. I sure did. Spoke with him coming out of the locker room at halftime. Overall, he said he's pleased with how hard his guys are playing, but his main emphasis at half was defensively. He said the biggest takeaway was really poor tackling. He said, I know this is Clemson, but we're capable of winning some of those one-on-ones. We need to go out there and do it. We've got to get off the field on third downs. And he said, and we've got to contest some balls. One thing they saw in that Georgia Tech game was that this Clemson offense sputtered when they got off schedule. He wants to tap into that. And then offensively, he said, you give a lot of credit to our quarterback quarterback Tyler Huff he's doing everything we ask of him maybe forcing a little bit at times but wants to see him continue to play hard yeah well Huff has played well so has the Paladin offense producing nine points and a quick slant throw for Kendall Dean offline so it'll be second down and ten I think Justin Roper's done a beautiful job calling the ball game to Furman's strengths Roddy against a powerful Clemson defense it really has he's worked in screens they've Moved Tyler Huff some. Tyler Huff's done a great job of extending plays with his legs. And honestly, just going out and making plays and getting the ball to guys like Ryan Miller, the running backs, have done pretty well too. Yep. There's a quick toss. Abrams trying to get to the perimeter. And Jalen Phillips not having it. The senior who played at Archer High outside of Atlanta for Andy Dyer with a big hit behind the line to make it third and long. It was a play where Clemson just had the right call. They spun the secondary with Jalen Phillips coming from his second, from his safety position down towards the box before the snap, which gave Phillips almost a running start at that one. Furman hasn't been three and out today offensively. 
Huff trying to avoid here. Screen Abrams on the right side. He will get the first down and more to the 41. He delivered another big hit, too. I'll tell you what, Wes, for the rest of the year, Clemson is going to see a steady diet of screens because they have not been able to defend it all during this game. I want you to take a look. When Abrams catches ball, there is no Clemson defender in front. You've got blockers out there. Jalen Phillips and Trenton Simpson converge, but it's only the speed of those two that didn't have that going to the house. 19-yard throw, another beautiful screen. Huff that time to Abrams. Here's a quick throw on the perimeter. This is Dean, the James Madison transfer. And Makuba, good to see him back in the ball game for Clemson. He was shaken up late in the first half. Makes the stop after a gain of right about four. Furman's been overmatched today, but this is a team that has come in. Not They have not been scared. They've lost one-on-one -on -one battles, as you would expect. Clemson has better players. But this is a Furman team where no matter how it ends, I would come out of this if I was Clay Hendricks feeling pretty good about the fight and the poise of this group. Here is Abrams trying to sweep to the right side. Falls forward for three. Tyler Venables down in the box. Makes the play. Roddy, here's the other part about this. We've done several of these FBS, FCS, Power Five, you know, FCS games in the past. Clay Hendricks had great perspective about the game. Yep. I thought in our visit this week, too. Hey, look, we know we need to go in and play clean. We need to do things to get better as a football team. We know what the situation is, but we've got bigger games. East Tennessee State on the road in Johnson City. Next Saturday's a case in point for him. Yeah. Anderson in motion. Here's Huff. Quick throw into traffic and intercepted. There's Barrett Carter. Agent zero for the Tigers who corrupted the hard drive Monday night in Atlanta. Finally makes a play here. He's been a little more quiet today than he was on Monday. This is just ill-advised. The timing's off. You get two receivers in the same spot. Both Kendall Dean and Ryan Miller are right there together. A lot of that because of the jam by Fred Davis. So you give credit to the corner, give credit to the entire defense, and Barrett Carter comes up with the big play. So six plays in the interception. Clemson gets it back near midfield off the Tiger 48. Will Shipley in the backfield with Uwe Ungalale. And this will be Shipley firing through. He's got 10, almost 11 on the first carry before Brinson, the junior strong safety, playing in his 21st career game, makes the stop. The hole opened up by that offensive line was the impressive part of that play. First down in 10, Furman 42 for the scrimmage. Specter and Collins here to the bottom of the screen and got it to the top. This is Shipley again. Cut back at the 30 and to the 28 and another first down. He is within a whisker, Roddy, of leaving town. He is. They like the counter coming into the blitz. It was a nickel blitz coming off the edge. Clips is still able to get a nice play off of it. Shipley will keep it, bounce it to the right. Can he get to the edge at the 15? Shoved out of bounds near the 11-yard line by Robinson. Boy, three really good runs by Will Shipley. And it's, it's three really good runs for that offensive line, too. The holes that they've opened up. It's been a little bit of a question early in this season. They didn't run the ball particularly well against Georgia Tech. It's been OK today. Mm. Hasn't been great. Uh, the second half, this offensive line starting to assert itself. 68 yards on 10 carries for Shipley. First and 10 just outside the 10. Quick throw to the far side. Collins gets a couple. Blackshear, the shoe top tackle of Bo Collins. DJ has not been asked to do a lot on this drive. It's been mostly on the ground, but did see him pull and get one to Jake Brenningstool, who's back in the game. Brenningstool is going to be the... Receiver 
inside the hash and that up to the three man side. DJ looks back foot lob for Collins. What a catch! Touchdown Clemson. Watched a lot of Clemson games last year. I think we all do because of their standing in the league. And obviously, we're watching every single team. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many times we saw DJ Uyunglele smiling. And after that touchdown pass, the trash in his face, lofting it up, dropping it in the bucket. Got a little bit of smile out of number five. Great throw over Travis Blackshear and a nice catch by Bo Collins. Nine yard touchdown throw. Second of the day for Uwe Ungole. BT Potter on the point. And the extra point is good. Well, the interception by Barrett Carson, or Barrett Carter, turns into a Bo Collins touchdown. It's a great throw by the quarterback. He's got pressure in his face, fading away. Puts it where only his receiver can catch it, and Bo Collins completes it. Put Clemson up big. Almost five minutes gone in the third. 35 to nine now after DJ Uyunglele on a beautiful nine yard lob to Bo Collins for the score, Roddy. It was a perfectly thrown ball. It wasn't the prettiest pass ever thrown, but man, was the placement yep. just picture perfect. That might be the last we see of this game. Might be. No return here for the Paladins. How about these, uh, it's, it's been a terrific afternoon for the young man too. And a couple touchdown passes, but a lot more too. Yeah, he's had nice protection for most of the day. It started early and so much of it for him, I think is confidence. And he got it. This was a great throw to Davis Allen up the middle where only he could get it. He's run the ball well. A little bit of twinkle toes there. <laughs> dodging guys. A couple of throws that you probably don't make a living doing, but when you can put the ball places like this. Yeah. I mean, this is what Dabo Sweeney and Brandon Streeter have been looking for and talking about. 17 of 20, 214 yards and two touchdowns on the day. And Dominic Roberto gets the ball first man through for Furman. 214 yards, 17 to 20. That's a pretty good yards per attempt over 10, Roddy. Yeah. And I think as, as the media group, we've been searching for reasons. Well, DJ Uyunglele has, been, has given us reasons to, to want to see Kate Klubnik. But ultimately, this is a coaching staff that saw him play against Notre Dame and Boston College in 2020. They know what the potential is. Yeah. Went back and watched some of that Notre Dame game, and yes, they were a fully formed offense around him. They did a lot of stuff to help him out. Four wide, letting Amari Rodgers and Travis Etienne have big impacts, but this is still a guy who made the throws. And so they knew it was in there. And I think as much as anything, these Clemson coaches have felt like, hey, if we just rebuild the confidence and a little bit of the fundamentals, Maybe he can play well enough to get us to the college ball playoff and maybe contend for a national championship. That's Wayne Anderson in motion for Furman on third and five. Huff's picked up a couple big ones today, looking for Roberto, and with Trenton Simpson defending, is going to get a pass interference call on the Tigers. Now, the, the head coach of the Tigers is also litigating here. Pass interference, defense number 22. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, a lot of things have gone right today for Clemson. That one did not, so Furman gets it via the penalty for the first down. Apparently the litigation not subject to appeal either. No. Well. Kind of agree with Davo Sweeney there, mm -hmm. at, at least from that look. Here is the pursuit of Huff, and Murphy gets him. Shy of the midfield line, Miles Murphy ran a long way to get Tyler Huff to the ground. Ran a long way very quickly at 275 pounds. It looked like Tyler Huff was going to be able to get out of that, but Miles Murphy 
showed off some of the skills. The hands on the left side and then chases the quarterback all the way down, all the way around. Come Tyler Hub's not a Come slow on. guy. Come on, that's Look. a drill. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. That's a drill. He rounds the hump, keeps yeah. going, keeps going, <laughs> and then brings down the quarterback. Here's Huff, quick throw on the perimeter, trying to get it to Anderson. And Makuba takes him to the ground right around midfield. Third down coming up again for Furman. This has not been the defense, Clemson defense's most impressive performance that they'll have this season. This is a defense that if you look at early draft boards, which, you know, you can... Subject to change. Yeah, definitely subject to change. And but discussion. But usually they get more right than they get wrong. Absolutely. Miles Murphy. Brian Brzee, Trenton Simpson, all consistently ranked in the top 15. Yeah. Mostly in the top 10, especially for Brzee and Murphy. And third down there will not be converted with Dominic Roberto. Brian Brzee and Miles Murphy combined for the side. Farman is going to bring on their punting unit with Ryan Levy. Who, by the way, Levy, who did not play the last two years, his uncle is Dave Moore, who was a NFL long snapper for Tampa Bay for about 15 years. And now works with our man Deckerhoff on the radio broadcast. Timeout, 7-10 to go. We're in quarter three. Clemson gets it back deep in its own territory when we continue on ACC. Welcome back to Clemson. I am down here on the field now with a very special guest, Clemson's own athletic director, Graham Neff. Now, Graham, actually enjoying your first home game as the Tigers athletic director, but you know, the future looks really bright. This is a program that has experienced major success under Dabo Sweeney. And of course, news broke this week of his extension. Talk a little bit about what he has meant to this program and the decision to extend him. Listen, very, very pro active with coach on this. Um, this is my 10th fall, my 10th football season here. Uh, coach certainly predates that, but what he's done, certainly with the program, six college football playoffs, four national championship appearances, two natties. I, it's the on the field speaks for itself, but the off the field, his values, impact on the community, the institution, what that looks like from an academic standpoint, our board and our president, just the, the, the alignment there is incredibly strong. So the proactivity with us, for him within a changing market, continue to invest in him, uh, to, to mark the investment for our program will continue. Incredibly well deserved. Now, down here in the stadium, something we actually haven't talked enough about during the broadcast are these stadium renovations. Look no further than the massive video board behind us. This one is actually five times bigger than the one that was here last season. Why was that such a priority for this program? Well, we knew that Durham and Roddy were going to be here for the first game, and Wes just needs to be able to focus on something a little bigger. Sorry, Wes. I've known Wes since I was uh, in school. Um, really important investment for our full uh, stadium, all 80,000. So it's five times bigger. It's, it's proximate to the stadium right above the hill, as you see. Um, so really important from a fan experience standpoint. We've also opened a new club this year. So balancing the, the premium and the, the, the return on investment that, that clubs are and uh, an investment with the stadium and the video board. We are also have a next phase to invest in our uh, parking lots, tailgate, Tiger Walk that'll be next year. So perpetual investment, really, really important and critical. It's never ending. And you did get a chuckle out of Wes. I heard it in my ear. But lastly, Graham, the season off to a great start. The big win, of course, over Georgia Tech this week. And I, if I heard correctly, you actually received the game ball, your first football game as athletic director. What did that mean to you? It was really special. As I said, 10th fall, but first one, I guess, in this role. Um, on Moders, Georgia Tech. So Coach Sweeney uh, made the reference in the locker room. His first game as head coach, I guess his interim, was against Georgia Tech, and he lost it. And so we said, hey, Graham, it couldn't be more excited for you in this role and the support of football. And you got the win, so let's not screw it up. <laughs> A special moment and probably the first of many. Thank you so much for your time. Go enjoy it. Thanks, Taylor, very much. Thank you. Wes? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. Wes, I'd say you caught a stray there, but that was that was No, aimed it was direct. Right it was you. aimed, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, terrific move by Jim Clements and the people at Clemson to make Graham Neff the athletics director after Dan Radakovich's departure. It really was. I mean, he's a, he's a rising star in this industry. I don't even know if he's a rising star anymore. I think he's yeah. just a star in this industry. He was going to get a job somewhere. Why not keep the, the philosophy that Dan Radakovich 
laid here, the, the groundwork laid, consistent by hiring Van Neff. It's a great decision. The Kari Collins on third and very long. This drive, which looked to have some momentum, was stemmed by a penalty. An eligible man downfield just took DJ Uwe Ungalale and the Tigers right out of it. And so Clemson, who started off its 15, is going to punt from its 15. And here's a look at Aiden Swanson. Whose mom Gina is a Clemson grad from IMG down in Tampa to punt this away. And Callie Chiswick is deep for the Paladins. Wobbly punt near side. And it will skip out of bounds. It's a plus territory possession, though, for the Paladins here, Roddy, with 5.18 to play. 35 9, Clemson in front. Don't forget, this is just game two of the triple header on ACC Network. Still to come. 7 o'clock Eastern tonight on ACC NX. John Trippin, Rini and Golia are in Midtown Atlanta for Western Carolina, Georgia Tech, and then ACC primetime football. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs will be there for Boston College and Virginia Tech. And that'll close our week two Saturday in the ACC. I think Grant Wells ba bounces back today, Wes. Mm -hmm. Four interceptions a week ago, two of them not really his fault. Right. But not a great performance regardless. Grant Wells gets a little bounce back. Huh, pressure gets it to Parks Gissinger, who gets spun around and dropped after a yard to the 45 by Keith McGuire. Furman's best starting spot of a possession today. Looks like Kendall Thomas is coming to the ball game to join Tyler Huff in the backfield. They were hoping to get a look at Thomas last week against North Greenville did not. They really like this youngster's burst, and he'll show it to you here. For a gain of about six to the 39, and Fred Davis the stop on the sophomore red shirt from Round Rock, Texas. Kendall Thomas a little different than the rest of the backs. Talk about how big they are. We've seen them run physically. Dominic Roberto, Devin Abrams. Kendall Thomas, a little bit more of a scat back. Really good receiver out of the backfield. A little bit more burst, as you said, Wes, than those other guys. So here is third down and about four. Quick throw by Huff. Nice catch inside route. Josh Harrison, a first down for Furman. It's a nice route by Joshua Harris to get inside of Toriano Pride. The freshman highly touted. All these freshmen for Clemson are highly touted, but they're very excited about it corner. There's Venables and Henry combining on a tackle of Thomas on the perimeter on the first down play. And there's KJ Henry. 46th career game today for him. He's got two degrees, Roddy. Undergrad sports communication. Already masters in athletic leadership and is uh, taking some NBA classes. For him. Yeah. Incredibly bright. He's playing his best ball. He's going to have a chance to play in the league, too, though. Yep. He counted his own money with an NBA. There's yeah. Davis on the takedown of Huff. Back to the 29 yard line. Taylor? Yeah, guys, I spoke with K.J. Henry this week. Just such an impressive guy. I asked him what he's in school for now. He said maintaining eligibility. Just kidding, of course. <laughs> but, uh, look, he has truly stepped up, had really a breakout game in week one, and he said he was most, pr most proud of that first play. No surprise, right? Forcing Ooh. that first interception. He said it was in his mind to go onto the field. I am setting the tone early. He said he couldn't predict it would look like that, but that was in his mind from the jump. Yeah. He had a heck of a night in Atlanta. Here's Huff on third down, and he dials Anderson for the first down. Looked like he had Dean and Anderson both, Roddy, working to the boundary side of the field. When Clemson's gone with that cover two look, this little corner route to the boundary has been a nice play for Furman to find that hole between the corner and the safety, and Tyler Huff has been on point and on target his throws as well. 14-yard throw. They got Miller over here in a bunch look. Now they'll drag him back toward the formation. And here's Huff trying to follow Miller's block. And maybe a couple of yards there. Two or three before Maskell makes the tackle. 
Well, Justin Maskell is a fifth year senior. He just feels like one of those guys been here seven years or so, doesn't he, Rod? He just talked about another one, KJ Henry. Right. He was like, he has as well. And when they get Xavier Thomas back, that'll be another guy. It's a, it's a really interesting defense in that it's got some really good young players, although Brzee and Miles Murphy aren't young anymore. They're certainly not the age of an Xavier Thomas, KJ Henry, or Justin Maskell. Ball start. Offense number 11. Five yard penalty. Second down. And Clay Hendricks, who's from Commerce, Georgia, played his football at Furman. He coached at Furman. Went away, spent good heavens, what, 11 years, at, uh, nine years at the Air Force Academy, right? Here's Huff, quick throw, looking to Miller, and Venables there, defending for the Tigers. And now in his sixth year at Furman, has got a program where they won almost 70% of their Southern Conference games. They've been to the FCS playoffs a couple times. He was the 2017 Southern Conference Coach of the Year. And it means something to him. It, it absolutely does. He loves this place. He loves the type of student athletes that he gets to coach. And you won't find a better person in all of college football. Third and 11, and that's Miller 82 in motion. Huff wants to throw. Tigers bringing four. Huff up in the pocket. Trouble lurking, and he will be stopped. And the play made by Levante Bentley. Levante Bentley is a good player in his own right. Simpson, Trotter, Carter, those guys, the linebacker position is going to be hard to find a lot of time. But Jeremiah Trotter has to answer the game. Or excuse me, if Levante Bentley has to answer the game. You will know it with the neck roll. 30-yard try for Axel LaPro. And right down the seam for the second field goal of the day for LaPro. And all of a sudden, 48 seconds to go in the third. 35-20 football presented by Dr. Pepper. You see Clemson, number five in the country, leading firm at 35-12. Don't forget, coming up before primetime begins tonight from Blacksburg, ACC Huddle. Jordan Cornett's got Eric McClain. Emac, what's happening? We know you're watching. EJ Manuel, Coach Mark Rick, Eddie Royal, they'll be lucky to keep him from running out of the tunnel tonight. Gotta get a different, we gotta get a bigger graphic. We gotta another, get Eddie Royal in there. Don't you gotta have the ball to throw it to? You gotta throw it to him. And then don't forget they'll be there after the ball game as well tonight with the Hokies and Eagles from Lane Stadium. After the Hutchback, the Tigers will begin. start from his 25. And is DJU coming right back out there, Ronnie? I thought we I thought we'd seen the last of DJ a couple series ago. Continuing to give the big quarterback some reps. Big Klubik did have a drive in the first half. It was five plays and then ended in a punt. Uwe Unglule, most part, has looked very, very solid today. 19 to 23, 219, two scores. Kobe Pace with him in the backfield and Farman right there. They went right over the top with Seth Johnson, the nose tackle. Look at Big Johnson now, senior from the Baylor School in Chattanooga, whose dad played for UTC. Starting offensive line is still in for Clemson, so I mean, that's a play that you're making against the big boys. Let's go. Louis Ungalale, quick throw off the hands and intercepted. Trying to go to Spectre. And it ends up being picked off by Cam Brinson. Looked like Brandon Spector cut off his route. DJ Uyunglele leading him towards the safety, Hugh Ryan. Watch where Spector stops. He sees the safety coming and slows down, throttles it wisely. DJ throws the ball where he expects him to be. It's off the hands. He probably would have been better not tipping it at all, but it gets tipped and ends up in an interception. So Brinson comes away with Clemson's first interception of the year. And now with the ball at the Tiger 34. How aggressive does offensive coordinator Justin Roper want to get? He hands it to Devin Abrams on first down. One of those sort of playing unconventional things that we were talking about at the beginning. You get a quick change, usually you're going to get a shot, especially right before the fourth quarter starts. Opposite run the football. Yep. 
So the fourth quarter starts. Furman's got it plus territory. Leading Furman 35 to 12. And they just put this mammoth new Dabotron to use. <laughs> Lighting up this crowd here for quarter four. It's always a great crowd here at Clemson. They flip it to Anderson on the sweep. So the interception by Brinson has given Furman now third and about five and a half early in the fourth. And we'll see what happens here with the Tiger defense. Tyler Huff empties it, Roddy. Walks the throw, and Brzee's having none of it. They're going to call that a fumble or an incomplete pass. Brian Brzee was having none of Furman on third down. My man is better than your man, Roddy. Yeah. Brian Brzee just absolutely dominated on that one. I have to take a look and see if this was grounding. There's no receiver in the area, and it doesn't get past the line of scrimmage. Unless Luke Shiflett is considered in the area, it was kind of in the general vicinity of near where he was standing. Furman takes their first charge on out of the half. Done out on the field. So we're going to take it with them. Furman goes to a timeout. Justin Roper, Clay Hendricks. I think the Paladins may snap this on fourth down when we come back. Out of the Furman timeout, we welcome you back to Clemson. Paladin's going for this. Fourth and six. Huff wants to throw, and it is incomplete. Trying to dial Joshua Harris, and Sheridan Jones was covering for Clemson. Sheridan Jones making a really smart play, kind of sitting right at the sticks. The top of the break makes it a really tough catch, especially with it being a little off target. Josh Harris tries to go up. Unable to bring it down. It's a good call, though, on fourth down. If he throws better, ends up in a first. Tigers take over at their 30-yard line, and Uwe Unglele into the fourth. Kobe Pace with him in the pistol. And we get more movement on the Tigers. Here come some changes in the offensive front. Well start. Offense number 71. Five-yard penalty. First down. Jordan McFadden, the big left tackle. Brian Tucker is checked into the lineup for the Clemson five on the front line. Big 330-pound redshirt sophomore from Knoxville. Who <laughs> end a to pace for a yard or two. Siana the tackle. There's a look at Tucker. It's been one of those games where it's been very low possession. This is only Clemson's fourth possession of the second half. And one of those was a two play possession that ended in the interception. Another one, a three and out. Right. This offense is, hasn't been on the field very much. And, been a little disjointed in the second half. Right? Kind of it's, and after the snap there, a moment ago, Roddy, to your point, only the 11th play of the half for Clemson, right? Yeah. After the penalty, DJ oh. tried to rip it, and it is caught. And Gata falling down at the 45. And boy, Micah Robinson came within a whisker of picking this. Been a couple of throws today where I've said you probably don't want to live like that on a regular basis. An ACC play, this is an interception. I mean, that is an inch from a corner, and all you need is a little bit more length, a little bit more burst out of that break, which is what you're going to see. The Atlantic Coast Conference, and that ball's picked. See Gata favoring that right shoulder as he comes out. It's not something the Clemson fans will want to see. Nope. Third and five here for the Tigers. Pressure coming, Furman bringing a lot of folks, and a throw that is intended for Dakari Collins and incomplete with Robinson coverage. Now, flags are down on the play here. And I believe it's on 
Micah Robinson. Defense number 14. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Clay Hendricks is befuddled. He's asking, is it just because he didn't turn around? DJ Uyungle is trying to go back shoulder. It's actually not a great throw at all. Collins almost gets there. And, and yeah, I think that is because he didn't turn around. If you turn around and play the ball, then it doesn't look like you're pushing the receiver out, right? With your face buried in his chest, basically. Yep. So the penalty gives Clemson midfield and a first down. DJ trying to get up in the pocket will just end up bailing forward for three. Things have kind of gotten bogged down a little bit. The tempo of the game has not been to Clemson's favor at all here in the second half. Well, you, whenever you're starved of the ball, it, it, it's hard to get in a little bit of, hard to get in any rhythm. Unfortunately for Clemson, the question is going to be asked, all right, which it, is this Clemson offense? What are they more like? Are they more like the offense we saw in the first half, or are they more like the offense we saw in the second half? Because this was the offense we saw at the beginning of the Georgia Tech game, too. Right. Well, and that's kind of where I was going. It was first half bad, second half better. Monday night in Atlanta. There's Siana making the tackle on the shovel to Kobe Pace. So now another third down. So what's your summation after seeing four halves of football for this crowd. Well, the thing that you know about Clemson's offense is they are they do not look like they are going to be explosive like a year ago. I mean this was the 13th most explosive offense in the league last year. Only Duke had less ex less explosive plays mm -hmm. and that looks like it's going to continue. They're going to have to have you know eight to ten play drives on a regular basis to be able to score which means staying on schedule. Here's Uwe Ungalale looking for Williams and Looked like he had a chance to make the play against Blackshear, but it comes up empty and now fourth down. And that's that's part of why you saw the, the throw to Dakari Collins. That one was a little off tough catch. You end up getting the pass interference, but the throw was a little off there. There, the throw was absolutely Holding. perfect. Offense number 78. That penalty is declined. It is fourth down. The throw there is absolutely perfect, and E.J. Williams can't bring it in, and that's just what we saw last year from Clemson. As much praise as we heaped on this offense in the first half, this is more like the offense we've seen consistently over the last season in two games. Mm. Clemson just 72 yards in the second half. Clemson has 51, by the way. Swanson to punt. Trying to hang it high on Cali Chiswick. It will hit at the five and be touched up inside the ten. That's going to get us to a timeout. So, Furman takes over deep in its own territory. When we continue We're at uh, Frank Howard Field, Clay Hendricks, native of commerce, we told you in a Furman grad, is the Bobby Johnson head football coach at Furman University, a position now endowed through alumni contributions of former players and contributors to Furman University in name of the great Bobby Johnson who coached here in 1994 to 2001 later at Vanderbilt rejuvenated and revitalized their program but it brings to mind the terrific history of head coaches Bobby Johnson Jimmy Satterfield Dick Sheridan who just went in the College Football Hall of Fame Roddy this past December out in Vegas and of course a remarkable career as well in the ACC at NC State I mean there's no institution of its size, and by size I mean under 3,000, that has as proud a football coaching tradition as does Furman University. It's pretty impressive when you have that list, and Clay Hendricks has certainly been a welcome, welcome addition to that line of coaches. He's done a nice job there for him. He's got a good ball club, Wes. They're yeah. going to be one of the best in the SoCon. they got a big game next week against East Tennessee State. Dominic Roberto running straight in. And I know Bobby and Katherine Johnson are down in the low country of South Carolina in the Charleston area, and I know they may be watching this afternoon, and we send our best to Bobby and to Catherine. And Dick Sheridan is as good a football coach as the Atlantic Coast Conference saw in the 1980s and early 1990s at NC State. He did a terrific job with the Wolfpack. 
wonderful and well-deserved honor for Dick Sheridan to go to the College Football Hall of Fame list. Winner. We didn't uh, we didn't have the graphic, but uh, that is this week's edition of Westopedia. <laughs> I'm counting it. Is that right? Oh yeah. Is definitely. that where you're going? Okay. I mean, you, you took me down. You, you took me down history. Lane. I was. You know what I was going to do was Grove Hill, Alabama, with. Uh, Wes Goodwin from yesterday. Yeah, that was that was that was a good one too. That was I'm telling you now. Four West Clemson coaches from a city of 1,200 in, in Southwest Alabama. Yeah, there's Ryan Miller. Uh, I mean, Wes Goodwin came from Grove Hill, Alabama. As R.J. Mickens makes the tackle out on the perimeter against Ryan Miller. I mean, there, there's Wes. Now. When it comes to small Alabama towns, Rodney, we're fortunate to have an expert on this crew, are we not? Yes, we are. <laughs> now, Taylor. Well, <laughs> see, this is this is when I shine, guys. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it confirmed. Okay. I grew up in a very small town. Coach Goodwin actually told us he graduated with 28 in his graduating class at Clark Prep Academy, and I beat him, graduating with 24. But you know. I would argue that greatness comes from those small schools. <laughs> and, well, the, the results would, would back you up there, TD, yeah. with, with you and Wes Goodwin. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, guys. Uh, his, he's got a fascinating story. I mean, he was a, a defensive analyst for Print Venables when he left to take the Oklahoma job, gets named defensive coordinator in a move where people were scratching their heads, to be quite honest, yeah. because none of us had ever heard of Wes Goodwin. He was right. stored away in some closet working away. For Brent Venables trying to make him look smart. Third down throw to Miller will be shy of the first down. Here's the part. Dabo yesterday in our visit with him, did he hit the Waffle House cook moniker when oh, he yes said he did. Remember, so we hired the guys? It's it seemed like we'd hired the guy from Waffle, Waffle House. <laughs> that was I mean, to, to come uh yeah. to come coach defense. I mean, and while I uh I, I'm a big fan of the people at Waffle House, especially the guys cooking on the grill. Yeah. I don't know that I'd love him to call my defense. Wes Goodwin certainly more than qualified with the people he's been around. Uh, the most fascinating part of the story to me is he, he went to Mississippi State originally yeah. and was a baseball GA. Was a baseball manager, Excuse a student manager, manager for the great yeah. Ron Polk. Take yeah. their first yard time out of the path. Time hey, out we're going to step aside. Wes Goodwin gets a timeout. Davo Sweeney calls one here. Fourth down. It's uh, two to the first down, and Clemson wants to check and make sure here next. ACC Network Football presented by Dr. Pepper. We're in the fourth. Number five, Clemson leads Furman 35 to 12. Great to be with Roddy Jones, Taylor Davis, Wes Durham, Tim Sullivan, our producer, terrific crew. Don't forget, coming up tonight, Boston College, Virginia Tech in prime time. And that ball got fumbled on the punt, and the Paladins say they have it. And there is a scrum at the 46 of Clemson and they do have it I thought it was the safety Hugh Ryan recovered by the kicking team that came up with it ends up being Justin Hartwell yep he and Blackshear both there will Taylor once you start having to charge that fast, if you're not able to get under it, you got to kind of you just have to bail on catching it, let it hit the ground. Tries to field it low, hits off his hands. Sloppy, sloppy second half for Clemson. I mean, to get there on short rest, but Dabo Sweeney is not going to be happy with the second half performance. So off the Clemson 45, best starting position of the day for Furman. Huff loads and throws and backing out of bounds, holding onto the ball was Joshua Harris, and it's a catch at the 32. And the strength there. And Toriano Pride has his hand in there trying to rip it away from Josh Harris, and he's able to hold on to it. Impressive by number two. Yep. Who was all freshman team in the SoCon a year ago. Reaches back to get it. That was a, that's a, that's a heck of a catch. Sure is. Another quick throw. This is Miller going to work on the far side. And he eases around Pride again. So 
Well, they're coming right at the freshman corner from St. Louis. Toriano Pride Jr. for Clemson. First Harris, now Ryan Miller. Now both two freshman corners in goes Clemson right now. Pride to the top, Caden Lucas to the bottom. Here is Huff to his right. And tried to send a dart to Wayne Anderson. That's was intended for Wayne Anderson Jr. And the Tigers had Greg Williams pressuring. Big 99. 270 pounder chasing Tyler Huff. Well, Farman's playing with the house money now, Roddy. In the fourth with six and a half to go. And Clemson's got some reserves on the field, but a little pause for the concern here with some of the miscues. Hop on a quick shot inside. Kendall Dean the catch and a first down for the Paladins. Throw's been really available to Furman all day long. That one in front, that one in front of Jaden Lucas. Yep. But you're right. I mean, it, this, this isn't in danger of becoming a game. But Furman has been the better team in the second half. Yep. Clay Hendricks has got some things to build on with his Paladins. Roberto trying to shake the pressure. You mentioned something to build on. I mean, it, just to, to give a little context of what Furman's going to be, they've got two tackles that are all conference level tackles. They've got a two time All American in Ryan Miller at quote unquote tight end. Joshua Harris, you saw the catch that he had. He's only a sophomore. Wayne Anderson, we've seen him make plays. The running back room's really good. And Tyler Huff, he's a ball player. Yep. There's a quick throw off the hands of Anderson. And he had been able to trap inside against Wade Woodass, a true freshman from Jesuit Tampa, who, by the way, got a block punt the other night in his college debut against Georgia Tech. Nice job in the first action at the college level. Anderson's got to bring that one in, though. Yep. Quarterback gave him a shot. Went up, just couldn't haul it in. Third down. Uh, Ryan Miller, third from the top. Looking that way. Little stick route, throw, Miller catch at the five. Tackled out of bounds. First and goal at about the three. Keith McGuire. Finally got to the elusive Miller. I don't, I don't care what level you're at. I mean, that's just one heck of a route. Watch him singled up. The ability to change directions against Keith McGuire. I mean, that's high level stuff right there. That's a guy committed to the craft too, Roddy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the way you run it. And, and you know, Coming out hard, getting those two hard steps in and being able to flip your hips and get back out, it's impressive. 12 catches, 97 yards, and a whoo. That, however, he got the bad end of the law with Levante Bentley there. I would say the percentage of shovel passes working against Clemson the past couple of seasons is pretty close to zero. I say that as a graduate of Georgia Tech who infamously tried one last year on a fourth down. Yeah. They are very good at sniffing those out. Levante Bentley was all over it. I got to tell you, the collar sells Bentley for me. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Love a good neck roll linebacker. Yep. That's Miller in motion. Second and goal. Huff in trouble. Taken down Bentley again. Back to back plays by 42 in the orange. He's played very well today. Tyler Huff just holds on to the ball a little too long. The clock has to speed up down near the red zone. There's just so many bodies close that it's more likely that you're going to get one of those guys coming from linebacker level. Levante Bentley is responsible for the back when he blocks. He's free to blitz. He gets the sack. 29th career game for Bentley, who had 30 tackles, four for loss, and a sack last year. Third goal. Quick throw again. The catch. Harris held on. It'll be fourth and goal at the one. Two big sticks. 
Mickens, he bounced through. And then Carter finished it. And the thing that I like the most is it looked like good football all the way around. Mickens doesn't lower his head, doesn't target at all. Just a good, hard football hit. Obviously, the job by Harris to spin off is pretty impressive. Now Furman's going for it. Yep. Roberto in the backfield. And he got chopped down. Maskell. The first guy there, big seven. I think I understand what Furman wants to do, set the tone of this offensive line. But if you're trying to get the ball in the end zone, that is the path of most resistance against this Clemson team. Fourth down on the one, Justin Maskell shoots through. Stops the Paladins on downs. Well, under three to go, Kate Club. Take the deep shot for EJ or for Antonio Williams, who can't come back and make the play, but it'll be pass interference on Travis Blackshear. It's one of the only deep shots we've seen today from Clemson. Yeah, one of two, I think. Yeah. Pass interference, defense number 14. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. Ball kind of hung up there on Kate Klubnik, too. Yeah, Charles Mar Lamartina said, Lamartina said it was uh, 14, it was one. Travis Blackshear on the pass interference. So move it. 15 yards to the 17, and Klubnik oh, throw it out of bounds. He took a big lick now. Holy smokes. Evan DiMaggio. Whose great uncle was Jolton Joe DiMaggio. It was the guy to arrive to Kate Club. Let's take a look at the hit. And Klubnik's trying to go with the tunnel screen. It was just a fall. DiMaggio actually did a pretty good job of not unloading on him. So second and ten. Quick throw on the perimeter, and that goes nowhere. Blackshear, the big hit. And it was on Will Taylor. Furman takes their second charge, so I'm out of the half. Wow. This is a 30-second timeout. So there you go. Klubnik, two series. Take away the penalty, three and out, Roddy. We got a third down coming up here. The thing, though, is I, I was we were kind of wondering coming into this game, how would they manage the quarterback position? Right. What was going to happen? And look. As cynical as we can be in the media about some of the things that coaches say, talking to them yesterday and with the actions that we've seen today, they're not close to making the substitution of, of Kate Klubnik for DJ Uyunglele. Right. You and I have been a part of the landscape of the Kelly Bryant, Trevor Lawrence yep. situation. And, and we saw the Cole Stout, Deshaun Watson trend. Absolutely. And I, I will tell you this, while it is portrayed to be the same, it no. doesn't feel the same. It is the the when you saw Cole Stout and Deshaun Watson, the the talent differential was just obvious from the very beginning. With Kelly Bryant and Trevor Lawrence, you had a guy in Trevor Lawrence that was the eventual number one overall pick. DJ Rionglele, they still have a lot of focus. Klubnik back across his body and off the hands, incomplete of Cam Brinson looking for his second pick of the day. And that and that's a bad decision. That's a bad decision by a freshman quarterback. And when you are trying to supplant an incumbent starter, when you have these situations, it needs to look a little bit more like it did last week, where you drive the ball down the field, you make good decisions and good throws. You've really had two drives at Cape Klebnikin, but the offense has done absolutely nothing. And that one was a that was a horrendous decision. Yeah. It should have been intercepted. Well. Furman's had 138 second half yards. Clemson just 73 as the Tigers go three and out. And here is Callie Chiswick at midfield after the Swanson punt. And with 221 to go and one timeout remaining, Clay Hendricks team gets the ball at the 50. Don't forget to uh, 
Stay in tune with all the ACC news. You can do that every afternoon. ACC PM. The network's new afternoon studio show. Mark Packer, terrific human being. <laughs> Host the show with Trey Boston, Taylor Tannenbaum. Terrific show yesterday from Blacksburg. The latest from around the league, the latest in football and more four to seven weekdays on ACC Network. When it comes out of a basement, can you call it a studio show? Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> For a while, for three years. That's fair. Yeah. Call it a basement show. Yeah. Jace Wilson has come in at quarterback here. Mayon Hicks. This is a 30 second The first uh, carry of the drive. And got him right at uh, 15 yards. So all of a sudden, here's Jace Wilson, who came in for a, uh, a helmet that came off snap in the first half. And he's got Mayon Hicks with him. Redshirt freshman from uh, DeSoto, Texas. Clemson has uh, down to one timeout. Roddy, uh, I tell you what, it's been an interesting day. It's a big day in the ACC with a lot of games on this calendar. But uh, let me tell you, the Alabama-Texas game was one point. Notre Dame lost at home to Marshall. Yeah, that's tough. 26-21. That's tough. Terrific win for the Herd. It's the first time in the history of Notre Dame football that a coach has lost his first three games. Marcus Freeman lost the bowl game, and then obviously the loss to Ohio State last week and Marshall this week. And they, it, they get Cal the week after that, Carolina the week after that. I mean, it is. Ooh. Yeah, when you get off to the kind of start Notre Dame has, every game looks losable. Miami, Wake Forest, Duke, on, NC State, and Carolina all won in the noon window today. Roddy, and I, I think that it really sets the league up for a a nice week too, because you know, so much of the narrative of the ACC and of every league is built in the non-conference and yeah. what you're able to do. Now, if, if Pitt's able to beat Tennessee. If Virginia, Virginia looks like it's having a tough time against Illinois. But especially if Pitt's able to beat Tennessee. With the wins that the league has in the non-conference and the stage next week, Texas A&M struggling against App State today, uh, this week. Right. Miami going there next week. He sets the league up nice for the narrative to be in the league's favor. Right. Miami can't go to College Station, though, and have one of those first halves like they had today. No, sir, they cannot. Sir, they cannot. Carolina got themselves a shootout at... Uh, Georgia State today. Yeah, well, it's, it seems like that's just what Carolina's going to do this year. Yeah. But I will, I will say this: as you see, Hicks convert the third down. Roddy, Mike Elko going to Evanston, Illinois, that's big. and leading wire to wire. That's big. Uh, the, the the play of Riley Winner, I think, is one of the stories of the league so far through two weeks. It's one of these stories. Duke's quarterback play has been abysmal for. The, Four since five Daniel years. Jones since left. Da since Daniel Jones left. Right. And now Riley Leonard comes in and injects that offense with an energy, the ability to go to Northwestern and score like that. I mean, yeah. we saw what Northwestern did to Nebraska. Yeah. No question. That will likely be the final play. We'll see. Um, the other note of today is Sam Hartman's return and a win at Nashville. Yeah, only uh, Second and six. 18 or 27, 300 yards and four touchdowns. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good for number 10. Yeah. But, I, you know, I think for the league, though, you're just excited to see him back and healthy for him. You, you're, you're happy, certainly, first and foremost, that he is healthy and uh, obviously playing well as a bonus. Well, Dabo Sweeney picks up the win. He and Clay Hendricks, a nice handshake. Win 152 for Dabo Sweeney. Clemson, 35 consecutive wins as an AP top five team against unranked opponents. Longest active streak in FBS. And for the first time in about three years, they're going to meet at the Paul here at Frank Howard Field.